Next up, uh, we're going to go to uh, Florida, Titusville. Nick, uh, thanks for hanging on the line. How you doing today? Hi, yourself, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, Ken, I want to say I'm, I'm 84 years old, and the way you explain things... Makes- Nick, I appreciate that uh, very much. Have a good day, sir. All right, you too. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. Special hello to my uh, good friends Tiffany and Lucas and my son Ryan, who are lucky enough to, uh, they're listening in in Texas right now, and we're lucky enough to check out the Sunday night football game last night between Dallas and the Philadelphia Eagles. So hi to you guys. We'll see you back here uh, later tonight. Uh, The phone number to use if you want to give me a call, 877-927-6648. You can catch Breakout Investing every day on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. If you can't listen live, no problem. You can pick my show up as a podcast on iTunes. And don't forget, you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Just type in tfnn.mobi and you can listen to the stream that way as well. All right. Tiger TV, another reminder, if you uh, want to look at charts live along with me as I'm going over them, you can use Tiger TV to do that. Uh, Channel 1, the show is carried live on the homepage of TFNN.com, and it is archived on Channel 13. Tiger TV is also viewable on your handheld device as well. All right, taking out, uh, taking a look at the major averages here. NASDAQ composite, uh, it's almost like clockwork, right? We were talking about this 50-day moving average at 30.20 being possible resistance. What does the tech index do today? It hits a high of 30.30, about 10 points above the 50-day moving average. It has uh, reversed and is down near its session low, down close to 5 points now to 3,005, still holding above that uh, 3,000 Uh, Price level. Uh, Volume today, pretty close to what we saw on Friday. Volume was pretty heavy Friday on the NASDAQ, above average at just over 2 billion shares. We're tracking about 3% lighter than that today. Uh, On the NASDAQ, let's switch over, take a look at the S&P 500. We'll see that this uh, index is also near its session low, also having problems at the 50-day moving average here. Hits a high of 14.23. It is uh, now down about five points, last uh, trading around 14.11. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange, tracking pretty close to what we saw Friday, which was also elevated, uh, 1.1 billion shares traded on the New York Stock Exchange on Friday. So tracking just slightly higher than that uh, today on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ volume slightly lower. So uh, whether this rally continues or not, is really dependent on if new money is going to continue to come in from the sidelines. One would think uh, that would happen if there is a sooner than expected resolution to the fiscal cliff, but um, from what we've seen so far, this could be a a long, drawn-out fight between uh, Democrats and Republicans. And uh, we'll stay confident that there will be some sort of agreement reached before year-end, but that is uh, a big if at this point. Uh, Bond yields near session lows after early strength. The yield on the 10-year note up slightly to 1.63%. 30-year bond also up slightly, but uh, trading near its session low, uh, last yielding around 2.8%. Dollar index getting hit a little bit today, down to 79.86, back below that 80 level. It's down about 30 ticks today. U.S. dollar index, let's take a look at the uh, chart here. And now uh, trading actually below its 50-day moving average. So the U.S. dollar index today did take out some uh, uh, did take out some support. It is uh, trading below that uh, pivotal 80 level. So who knows? Weakness in the dollar. Maybe that brings uh, more money into the uh, stock market. We will see. Gold uh, up eight dollars and forty cents today. Settles at one thousand seven hundred twenty-one dollars and ten cents an ounce. Crude oil extends its winning streak to three sessions, up 18 cents to 89.09. Economic data out of China. 
Interesting, the uh, China's HSBC's Purchasing Managers Index came in at 50.5 from an initial reading of 50.4. It's the first time in 13 months the Manufacturing Index came in above the 50 level. Now, I would like someone out there to enlighten me. I kind of threw, um, threw the, a question out there on uh, Twitter and really haven't, uh, haven't gotten that many great answers, but here you have the Hang Seng index. This is as of uh, Friday's close. You can see a very strong technical setup here, very close to a 52-week high. The Hong Kong Hang Seng Index uh, really close to breakout territory here. But then you've got another stock index in China that is widely followed. And I know the makeup in these two indexes are, uh, are, are different. I know they track different types of companies. But you've got one index that looks like it's poised to, to break out technically. And then you've got the Shanghai Stock uh, Exchange that is is, I don't know, some 18, 20 percent off its recent 52-week high and just uh, can't get out of its own way. So there's really this big, uh, big dichotomy, if you will, between these two major stock indices in uh, China. I know the Hang Seng is, is more liquid, large-cap names, and the Shanghai is, is more uh, kind of speculative, smaller stocks, but um, I don't know. I mean, I, it's, it's sort of an apples to oranges comparison, but I almost look at it as the, as, uh, the, the Hang Seng almost being like the, the Dow. Um, but how many times have you seen the Dow near, near a 52-week high poised to break out and the NASDAQ composite uh, down, you know, 18 to 20 percent off its, uh, off its 52-week high? It's not a great comparison, but that it's just uh, such, a, such a differing picture between uh, China's two main uh, indices. If uh, any of you out there can enlighten me there, I'd, I would be interested to, to know because the Hang Seng is actually looking pretty darn strong right now. All right, uh, on the home front, the ISM Manufacturing Index comes in at 49.5 today. Lower than expected, the consensus estimate was for a reading of 51.2. Uh, new orders and employment plans were, were scaled back. So it was a disappointing reading, a little bit surprising because on Friday, last week, the Chicago Purchasing Managers Index for November uh, came in in line at 50.4, up from October's reading of 49.9. So uh, it was a disappointing re uh, reading from the ISM Manufacturing Index, but all things considered, the market is holding up uh, pretty well. Later in the week on Wednesday, we're going to get the ADP Employment Report, the latest read on private payroll growth. Expectations for November up 100 125,000. Uh, Thursday, we'll get challenger job cuts, weekly jobless claims, and then the, the big one on Friday, non-farm payrolls are expected to rise just 90,000. And I believe uh, the reading in October was 171, if memory serves. So jobs data later in the week, and we'll see how the market reacts to that. More special dividend announcements today. Let's take a look at satellite TV provider Dish Network, $1 special dividend from Dish. See, uh, headed into this week, actually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, last week had a nice little technical breakout for Dish. It is under a little bit of pressure today, down 1.3% to 36.57, but trading near its uh, session high, so uh, Dish Network technically strong here. Interesting to look at Dish Network compared to uh, Direct TV. In fact, I did a, a piece not that long ago, sort of uh, comparing the two satellite TV providers, saying that Dish was the was the way to go. Uh, definitely, if you look at a chart of Direct TV, and you see a completely different picture, right? So I know a lot of people only like to focus on fundamentals, but uh, charts can really, you know, be very telling um, in in terms of you know whether a stock is under accumulation, are big investors buying it, or is the stock under distribution? For DirecTV, uh, this is clearly a stock that has been under distribution. For Dish Network, really the complete opposite, because again, uh, late last week it did uh, it did enjoy a technical breakout in heavy volume and uh, broke out over that 36, 37 uh, price level. Also had a special dividend today from uh, hospital chain HCA Holdings. HCA, let's take a look and see how that stock is faring. After early strength, it's down near its session low, trading around 32.18, up 1.4% on the day. Uh, HCA, don't confuse that with HMA, because you probably, if you caught 60 minutes last night, 
Uh, a not not so flattering story on health management associates uh, associates done by uh, 60 Minutes last night, uh, basically questioning the uh, company's uh, admission practices. Uh, there were uh, several employees on record uh, that said there was pressure to admit patients from emergency rooms into the uh, hospitals to maximize uh, profits. So health management associates, no special dividend from them today, but a not so flattering story on 60 Minutes last night. HMA is down 6% today to $7.49. It um, operates 70 hospitals in 15 states, primarily, primarily in the southeastern United States. So that's the story there. Uh, yeah, special dividends, we're likely to see more of them between now and the end of the year. November was a very busy month. Uh, so again, today, DISH uh, Networks, uh, HCA Holdings. Remember last week we saw special dividend from Costco, 7 bucks a share. Recently, Las Vegas Sta Sands, uh, Gunmaker Sturm Ruger, and uh, also Whole Foods Market. I've, you know, this is a stock that I haven't been real keen on. I think uh, this one looks tired to me. I'm not really expecting it to uh, deliver uh, sustained leadership going forward, uh, but Whole Foods Market, um, uh, even when it announced a dividend last week, its price performance wasn't all that great, and it is uh, underperforming again today, down 1.2 percent to 92.25. So, uh, but we'll keep an eye out for more of those special dividends between now and the end of the year. Take a look at shares of Dean Foods, DF. Dean Foods said Monday it agreed to sell its Morningstar Foods unit to Montreal-based Saputo for $1.45 billion. Morningstar makes dairy and non-dairy extended shelf life products, including ice cream, whipping cream, and half and half. Dean Foods, after early strength, trading near its session low, but still up 2.3% to 17.54. Let's take a look at an earnings report. This is uh, really a uh, uh, cons, C-O-N-N. -N. Uh, not a, a name that a lot of people have heard of, but you look at its uh, daily chart here. See, it's been a tremendous price performer. Uh, stock is under pressure today, down 3.3% to 27 35. This is a consumer electronics company, not quite like Best Buy. They offer a little more product than, than Best Buy outside of consumer electronics, uh, home appliances, for example, home office products. Stock is up about 800% since December 2010, so it's made a massive, massive price move. They uh, beat the consensus estimate by 10 cents with profit of 38 cents a share. Sales were up 11% to $206.4 million. That was... Uh, let's see, that was about $7 million better than estimates. Same store sales up an impressive 12.6%. Uh, furniture and mattress sales did particularly well, up 31.7% in the quarter. Uh, demand was also pretty good for home office equipment and appliances. So uh, little known name here, Cons, but pretty nice earnings report uh, from the company, ticker C-O-N-N -N there. All right, headed into our first break. We'll be back in about three to four minutes. Happy Monday, everyone. Great to be uh, back in the seat here. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Lots more to get to. We'll do that when we come back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. 
Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally, we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only, when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase, and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you, 877-927-6648. Folks, if you haven't had a chance to check out the holiday promotion going on on the homepage of TFNN.com, check out the Tiger Dollar promotion, very, uh, very popular among uh, TFNN members. You purchase Tiger Dollars. You could use Tiger Dollars to uh, save a lot of money buying uh, products at TFNN.com. But if you purchase Tiger Dollars, uh, will donate up to 10% of your purchase price to the Salvation Army. Sign up by December 19th and get a 25% bonus match on any amount over 500 bucks. So this is a great way to save money, actually, on your newsletter subscriptions, uh, etc. So be sure to check out all the details right on the homepage of TFNN.com. All right, so my uh, take on the market here. Let's uh, switch back and take a look at the Nasdaq Composite here because I didn't um, didn't. Uh, let's see here, Nasdaq. There we go. Okay, Nasdaq Composite. We'll see the tech index still trading pretty much right at its session low, facing facing initial resistance at its 50-day simple moving average. Tech index now down a little more than eight points to 3,002, trying to hold that 3,000 level. So with the technical action that we're seeing in the market, not only with the NASDAQ composite, but with the S&P 500, uh, we said last week that as the indices get closer to that 50-day moving average, wouldn't be surprising at all uh, to see it get turned away. Um, and you know, considering that the scope of the market's run since November 16th when it hit that 
low just underneath 28.25 in this area here. A little bit of a pause, a little bit of pullback would be uh, healthy at this point. It's pretty much been a straight shot up. But uh, uh, again, it's a headline-driven market where the market is up nicely on a positive headline out of Washington, and then it's down sharply on a negative headline out of the Washington. It's just back and uh, back and forth. So uh, it's probably going to take some volume uh, to push the Nasdaq through its 50-day simple moving average. Uh, that might may take a little while for volume to come into this market. Uh, overall, I'm still optimistic that uh, it could be a good. Uh, good end to the year. My ultimate growth stocks model portfolio has uh, uh, more than a few long positions on stocks that I have um, uh, stocks that I started to purchase just a little bit before uh, we saw that follow through day, not last Friday, but um, a week before that, the day after Thanksgiving. So I have put on some long positions. I also went short a stock today for the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. I'm now set up to uh, to short stocks with that portfolio. So if you want to see the long positions, the watch list, uh, the one stock I'm short right now, uh, my next weekly update comes out tomorrow on uh, Tuesday. Uh, so you can get a 30-day free trial right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Just click on the Newsletters tab and then Investment Newsletters, and you can... Um, uh, see what I have been up to. All right, let's take a look at Deckers, D-E-C-K. This stock has been going gangbusters. Uh, you know, hard to say why. There has been some takeover chatter, takeover chatter maybe a, a bigger shoe company interested in the Uggs uh, brand, but Deckers up a little more than 8% today to 41.48. Stern AG came out today, upgraded Deckers Outdoor to buy from excuse me, uh, upgraded Deckers to buy from neutral with a $65 price target. So it's only a 41, selling at $41.50 right now. That's an aggressive price target from Stern AG. Uh, short interest still relatively high in Deckers, 14.8 uh, million shares held short as of November 15th. That's up from 9.9 .9 million three months ago. So uh, this stock, according to the buy rules that I follow, is, uh, is not a buy. Uh, but, you know, it was a, a $30 stock about uh, three to four weeks ago. It has made a, a, a tremendous uh, price move, but uh, it's also a stock that has been hit mercilessly by institutional selling in recent months. And uh, normally it's not, a, it's not a straight road back for a, for a stock like that. Too many uh, questions about the company's fundamentals going forward for me to have an interest in here, but have to respect its price performance over the past uh, few weeks. Kind of a strange upgrade today from Goldman Sachs. Let's take a look at shares of uh, Dell. I mean, talk about a stock that, I mean, Dell has had, you know, almost as many problems as Hewlett Packard in terms of just being a mature company, trying to find new growth avenues, not relying so much on the PC market, but services, um, you know, things like that. Uh, and Dell, after early strength, it, it's still up 4.5% today to $10.08, but uh, well off its intraday high of $10.49. Uh, but the company did get an upgrade from Goldman Sachs today to buy from Sell, and uh, the company, uh, Goldman Sachs, also lifted its 12-month price target to $13 a share from nine dollars a share uh, wrapping up facebook over the weekend TechCrunch reported that facebook might be interested in acquiring whatsapp a cross-platform mobile messaging application uh, facebook i think is uh, trading near its session low after early strength yep there it is down 56 cents to 27.44 after hitting an intraday high of 28.88 we'll be right back folks in just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Thanks very much for tuning in. Ken Shreve with you, 877-927-6648. Yeah, kind of an ugly day for Facebook today. It has been a monster performer headed into today, five straight price gains. Hits an intraday high today of 28.88, but it has reversed, and there's a little bit of juice behind that uh, behind that downside move today, down 2% to 27.44. Take a look at shares of uh, Apple. There isn't a day that goes by where we don't talk about Apple, but uh, it's interesting here. Just like the NASDAQ Composite, kind of facing some uh, resistance at a former support level uh, for five, six days now, uh, kind of bumping up against its 200-day moving average at 596. It is uh, getting turned away again today after hitting an intraday high of 594.59. It is uh, trading at 586.21 right now, down, or excuse me, up 93 cents on the day after early strength. Uh, mentioned it on the show Friday, but if you weren't listening Friday, Apple did announce some launch dates for its iPhone 5 and uh, new iPads in China. The iPhone 5 will go on sale December 14th. In addition, Wi-Fi versions of its iPad mini and fourth generation iPad will be available in China on December 7th. 
So that's it on Apple. Our 3D uh, printing company, Stratasys, under quite a bit of pressure today. Look at that. Look like a... Um, you know, pretty solid breakout for Stratasys last week, and I'll tell you, this is kind of what you don't want to see. You know, when you get these stocks that are trying to assert, assert leadership, when you're in a confirmed uptrend, which we are in, we got this mild follow-through day by the major averages, uh, the day after Thanksgiving on Friday, half day of trading, a lot of people are very skeptical of the follow-through, but um, really so far so good, but what you don't want to see is failed breakouts, and this is quickly turning into one uh, Stratasys. It is down 5.4% today to 70.91. So uh, Stratus is under quite a bit of selling pressure. Uh, 3D Systems, wouldn't be surprised to see uh, this one. Yeah, I mean, look at Stratus is three days in a row down. Uh, hits, a, hits a high of uh, just over 48 last week, uh, now trading at 42.74, down 4.4%. So you do have some, some breakouts here running into uh, troubles. The, the breakouts that I've nibbled at over the past two to three weeks are, are still hanging in there, not showing nearly the volatility of Stratasys and 3D systems, but that's something to keep an eye on. I mean, if, if uh, stocks that you thought had potential, technically strong, fundamentally strong, breaking out over swing points and heavy volume, when they start to fail and you start to see a bigger crop of negative action like that, that can be almost a, a warning that this rally may not have uh, much much left. And I got to tell you, with the S&P 500, NASDAQ Composite, uh, kind of bumping up against their 50-day uh, moving averages, like we mentioned earlier in the show, uh, it's still you know still a tricky environment out there where you know trading, taking quick profits, probably is uh, uh, not not bad. Uh, strategy, but uh, I've been, you know, looking at some uh, some short candidates. I'm still seeing plenty of short setups out there. Uh, on the one hand, we are in an uptrend, um, but on the other hand, you know, after we got that buy signal, mild buy, buy signal on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, just a few days later, we got a higher volume decline. So you've got a rally that's a little bit suspicious. So I'm willing to give my longs a, a little more time to, to work here, but I'm totally open to uh, entertaining some short positions as well. And uh, again, earlier today, I took out a, a short position in uh, a big leader, stock that's up uh, big over the past three years that really looks uh, vulnerable uh, to me. So um, taking a look at some other names I think that have uh, a, a chance of still working here. United Rentals, interesting technical uh, setup uh, here. United Rentals uh, still trying to muster a breakout here over 43 bucks a share after early strength. It's now up just uh, three cents on the day to 41 to 56, but it's not that far away from a, a swing point just over 43. Uh, provider of uh, uh, industrial uh, construction equipment, industrial equipment, rental equipment. So uh, that's a look at United Rentals looking pretty good here. And uh, MasterCard, you know, talk about MasterCard. This is what looks to me like a late stage base. Uh, ugly reversal today in MasterCard down a dollar seventy eight to four eighty six ninety. Hits an intraday high of four ninety four fifty one. So seeing a lot of uh, ugly reversals out there. Um, as we head into the close here, about 20, 20 minutes left to go in uh, Monday's session. Checking in on the NASDAQ uh, composite, trading near at session low, down 7 points now, 2 tenths of a percent to 3,003. And the S&P 500 in a similar situation, trading near its session low. Uh, after early strength, tried to just just poke just above its 50-day moving average, but has uh, reversed near its session low as well, down close to five points to 14.08. So some, um, you know, overall the action is, is still not looking too bad to me. I, if I really felt like it was important to be moving to the sidelines here and taking taking some short-term profits, I, I would. But uh, I'm still willing to give things uh, a little time to, to work here. Rackspace Hosting is another stock making a case it wants to uh, be a new leader here after a uh, brief consolidation. Shares of Rackspace down 2.1% today to 67.64. Volume doesn't look that uh, overwhelming to the downside. Looks like pretty good support for rack space in the 65.50 area, so it's got another two points to go before it gets down to its 50-day moving average, but um, yeah, a nice little uh, breakout for uh, rack space last week. It um, 
but under some pressure today. Most stocks are trading near their session lows, just like the just like the major averages are. So. Um, Let's take a look at shares of Equinix as well, EQIX. This is a, a stock that has not, you know, completely broken down yet. When you're looking for stocks to short, a common, uh, a common pitfall, I guess you could say, for a lot of investors is that they they short too early. They short a stock before it has completely uh, broken down, or they short they short a stock because they think it just can't go any higher, uh, and that that's very risky and dangerous as well. The key about shorting stocks and Bill O'Neill over at IBD wrote a, a great book on uh, short selling how to make money selling stock shorts pretty pretty simple uh, nothing real complicated but one of the main uh, things I got out of that book is that you got to be patient you got to wait for a stock to um, the, the breakdown process uh, can take several weeks or, or even several uh, months. So just because a stock breaks its 50-day moving average in heavy volume doesn't mean it's a short. But if it breaks its 50-day moving average in heavy volume, rallies back in light volume, and then meets with resistance at the 50-day moving average and starts falling again, well, that's a sign that it's telling you the stock is, is starting to run out of gas. And then it, it rallies back and tries to you know get back above the 50-day moving average again and fail, so you get these multiple failures, that's sort of the process of a stock breaking down. And that process is basically about just buying demand in shares uh, drying up. So uh, too early to say that Equinix has uh, broken down, but this is another stock that is starting to show some, some questionable uh, technical action. It's 200-day moving average at 171. Uh, looks like a pretty good support level, but you can see what Equinix did back here in late October, early November, when it uh, tried to rally back above its 50-day moving average after a period of weakness. It reversed, finished near its session low, uh, headed lower after that, ha recently rallied back. It's trying to get back above its 50-day moving average, but is having some, uh, some problems um, as well. So this is a stock that... Um, looks uh, vulnerable to me and uh, Hain Celestial another name that is uh, looking a little vulnerable here same situation see a break below the 50-day moving average and then you can see how that 50-day line has been um, pretty pretty stiff resistance up up to this point for the past uh, couple of weeks or so and uh, even the financials you take a look at the XLF the, uh, the financial select sector spider fund uh, you know, an ETF that broke below its 50-day moving average. And look, you think it's trying to make a meaningful attempt to get back above this uh, this resistance level. It's having having a lot of problems down uh, three cents today to 15.73. Its 50-day uh, moving average is at 15.79. So uh, these these are what vulnerable charts look like to me. It's probably too early to to think about shorting, uh, but they're the types of charts uh, charts that you want to be looking at for. Uh, potential short ideas, um, but you want to let that let that process of of buying demand drying up and just overall weakness. You want to let that process uh, you know fully play out. Let it let it happen and don't uh, don't um, make uh, don't be too quick on the uh, trigger to make a negative bet on a stock or ETF before it has um, truly broken down. Now, some examples of stocks that that have. Uh, you know, truly broken down, you know, Baidu would be one. You can see uh, Baidu when it broke below support here back in August. You can see it tries to, you know, rally back above its 50-day moving average several times and fails. Um, you know, Baidu is a, a broken stock. And uh, you'd also put uh, Chipotle, CMG, in that um, in that uh, group as well. Chipotle, you can see a, a very similar uh, chart. Uh, I would suspect that 50-day moving average at 278 is probably going to be resistance uh, for now. Uh, shares of Chipotle you know, trading around 263.90 right now. Let's check in on another restaurant stock, Panera Bread. Panera Bread, another uh, stock that uh, so far firming up at its 200-day moving average, uh, not broken yet, just just forming a base here, showing initial supporting action at its 200-day moving average. But the question is, is it going to have enough to, you know, start forming the right side of its base, start to retest that uh, former high around 175? In order for it to do that, it's going to have to get back above that 50-day moving average, currently at 166. It's about uh, six or seven points away from that. So uh, Panera looking better than Chipotle at this point, but still uh, not a stock that is uh, viable at this point. 
All right, so I mentioned uh, Ultimate Growth Stocks, uh, folks, my uh, weekly newsletter. My next update is coming out uh, tomorrow morning, so if you want to uh, to see see what kind of stocks I'm looking at here, see how big the model portfolio is, uh, see what stocks I'm thinking about uh, shorting, you can uh, check out Ultimate Growth Stocks right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Ba basically how I do things, you know, I refer to myself as a top-down investor, meaning that what 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 the major averages are doing plays a big role in how active I am in buying stocks. If I start to see signs of weakness in the major averages, and you know, even though we are in a confirmed uptrend right now, this uh, the, the S and P 500 and Nasdaq facing initial resistance at the 50-day moving average is, is telling me I'm going to start being a little defensive here. But uh, basically, I use a combination of fundamental and technical analysis when evaluating a stock. I say it a lot, but I'll say it again. I get a lot of people say, way, what do you think about this chart? Uh, a lot of times I say, it's you know, it's a really bullish chart. The chart looks great to me. Stock's under accumulation. But in, in a lot of cases, there's no, there's no fundamentals uh, driving the uh, or supporting the price performance. So with me, it has to be both. If I see a bullish chart, I want to you know, look at the balance sheet, and I want to see good, consistent bottom line and top line growth. I want to see an innovative product and service. I want to uh, see other just good fundamental metrics. But you know, when I see a, a stock breaking out in heavy volume, and I look back in the past two quarters, and I see sales down 25% from a year ago, or sales down 15% from a year ago, and earnings down 30%, and uh, you know low return on equity, um, and it's just information that tells me the stock is not very strong fundamentally, uh, the bullish chart doesn't uh, matter to me. So uh, just because a stock is showing strong technical action doesn't mean I'm going to buy it. I want to make sure that there's a fundamental story there as well. Uh, price performance is important to me. I like to target the strong price performers in an industry group. So if somebody's asking me to comment on a stock that's near a 52-week low, I'm generally not going to have much good to, to say about that. Stocks, uh, stocks that are in uptrends and trading near 52-week highs, uh, leading price performers in their industry group are generally the stocks that, um, that where un uncertainty is very limited. In fact, their earnings visibility is solid. They've got a great track record of growth. Fund managers are, have been consistently buying the stock. Uh, there's a lot of good going on at, uh, uh, in many cases when you're looking at the leading price performers in an industry group. When you're looking at the, the, the lagging price performers, the sluggish price performers, uh, those stocks that just can't get out of their own way, there's typically a lot of bad going on at these companies. So uh, that's why I tend to focus my attention on the, on the strong uh, price performers. And I also mentioned... Uh, you know, solid institutional uh, institutional sponsorship. That is uh, important to me. A stock is, you know, there's really two things that drive stocks price performance. It's uh, expanding earnings growth and market share. Um, so earnings growth drives price performance and also institutional buying. You want to be you want to be buying stocks that that institutions are 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 buying because when a a fund decides to take a four or five percent six percent stake in a company, that accumulation process can can take several weeks, if not months, to to fully buy that uh, position. So. Um, you know, if you can latch on to some of these stocks in the early stages of growth, when the funds are, are buying, uh, this is um, this is the time to be uh, buying. So that's uh, important to me as well. All right, headed into the final break. Uh, not much happening in the way of earnings after the close, but we'll take a look at some uh, uh, earnings reports coming up this week. And uh, we'll do that in about uh, three to four minutes or so. Ken Shreve with you on Breakout Investing. Happy Monday, everyone. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com.
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing. As we head into the close here, we'll take a quick check on the uh, markets, and we'll see the Dow right now down 38 points to 12,987. NASDAQ down close to 6 points to 3,004, and the S&P 500 down nearly 5 points to 1,411. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange is still tracking just a tad higher than what we saw Friday. So if we do get volume on the New York Stock Exchange that comes in higher than Friday and these percentage declines hold, again, this is kind of borderline distribution. Uh, it would technically be a higher volume decline, but uh, still doesn't really, session doesn't really have the feel of distribution. NASDAQ volume tracking a little bit lower than what we saw on uh, Friday. Some uh, late breaking news here. Apparently the Republicans have presented a uh, counteroffer to uh, President Obama's um, proposal that he made uh, last week. It's uh, basically the same uh, so the deficit reduction plan is about the uh, the size of President Obama's four trillion dollar tax and spending uh, program without raising tax rates under the Republican proposal. The Republicans would uh, increase taxes by $800 billion. Uh, remember, President Obama uh, 
proposed $1.6 billion in new taxes. That's about half of what Obama wants, and the Republican offer also includes $600 billion in savings in Medicare and other entitlement programs. Uh, that is about uh, more than $400 billion more than Obama has uh, proposed. So they're still quite a ways away here. Okay, we'll see how it, uh, how it shakes out in coming days. Taking a look at shares of uh, AutoZone. AutoZone is going to be reporting earnings before the open tomorrow. Uh, shares of AutoZone, you can see a big, nasty outside day for the stock. Uh, last week, it is under uh, renewed pressure today, down 1.4% to 378.49. 378.49 last for uh, AutoZone. We're also going to hear from uh, luxury home builder Toll Brothers tomorrow before the open. Toll Brothers is... Uh, Trading below its 50-day moving average, just building a base here. Uh, we'll see what uh, what the luxury home builder has to say. Another quarter of very very strong growth uh, is expected. The stock uh, right now up 52 cents, 1.6 percent to 32.36, ahead of the results. Uh, after the close Tuesday, we're going to hear from Pandora Media. This is another one of these companies where you see big revenue growth in recent quarters, but uh, still not uh, not profitable yet. And it was a you know twelve and a half dollar stock back in September, fell down to around seven dollars and fifty cents. It's uh, last trading around eight dollars and ninety four cents. So internet radio, very convenient. I love Pandora. I use the product a lot. Um, don't really like the stock all that um, all that much. And then on Thursday, it's going to be interesting to see. There was some analysts who came out with positive comments about Lululemon, kind of a gutsy call ahead of earnings on uh, Thursday. Lulu is expected to earn thirty-seven cents a share. That would be up thirty-seven percent from a year ago. Sales up thirty-three percent to three hundred and five million. That Lulu is another one of these big bull market leaders that has made a huge price run since the start of the bull market in March two thousand nine. In fact, Lulu is up more than fifteen hundred percent since March two thousand nine. I do have numbers for uh, Toll Brothers again reporting tomorrow before the open. Toll Brothers has been. Uh, basing basically consolidating gains since late September. Earnings expected to be up 167% from a year ago to 24 cents a share, with sales up 32% year over year to 566.5 million. So strong growth from toll. Let's see if uh, if it helps the stock tomorrow morning. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show. Always appreciate you listening, folks, to Breakout Investing. I'll be back yeah, back here tomorrow, three o'clock Eastern, for another show. Have a great afternoon. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.